Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report, sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers. Now, yesterday was just a weird day. Not that the fishing has been, you know, consistently great anywhere that you happen to be, although, yes, we've been talking about that lower part of the Willamette, especially if you're targeting uh, Chinook right now. Lots of folks are like, hey, talk more about sockeye. No, it's closed, it's over. I don't want to talk about it. It's frustrating. There's nearly 500,000 over Bonneville. Uh, they're trying to protect a very small segment of those that are going through the Snake River. So that's the reason why they closed it. 395 is the deadline up at the the upper end of the Columbia, or yes, the Columbia River uh, in Washington. That's the deadline. That's why I mentioned that yesterday. Not shad, sockeye. That's what we're referring to. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's closed. It's, it's just one of those things. Makes zero sense to me, but y'all know I'm not the brightest bulb in the bunch. As my dad used to like to say, not the sharpest spoon in the drawer. You got that one? Uh, so it is, it's just close. But if folks are still chasing salmon, it's gonna be, uh, Chinook in particular is gonna be right there at the lower channel, the head of the channel, down by the deadline. Don't go over the deadline. Do you remember this last year? We were asked by OSP specifically to remind everyone to stay on the Willamette side of that mouth if you're gonna be down at the deadline where it meets the Columbia River. Both of them, one at the bottom of Savi Island and one up above, because they're looking for you and that's exactly what they wanna find. So just stay on this side. And that's actually been where, uh, it's been a decent bite there in the morning. Uh, Mr. Mulkey yesterday made it pretty clear that this is all based on tide down there. Uh, it's also based on temperature. As the temperature goes up, those fish get a little bit deeper. Uh, so kind of pay attention to that if you're gonna get back out there, but watch those tides and try to hit the front end of that high tide as it starts to drop off. That's your best time frame. hour or so before, hour or so after, and then cover a lot of ground if you're gonna be down there. But great options. We just mentioned Hag Lake with one of our uh, viewer photos. Uh, that's another great option, uh, but there's tons of them. Up and down the coast as well. We're gonna talk with Big Dave Manners here in just a little bit. Uh, we just actually checked in with him, and they're, they're having some success down there this morning. So we'll see how um, that actually plays out when we get them up on the air. Hopefully technology works with us. All right, let's take a look at the fish counts. See how much they changed from yesterday. Super easy to blow right past this one because they haven't updated it. 16-2 uh, over the falls. Again, not great, but it is what it is. Uh, I will say this, though. There are some folks that have been successful all the way up. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Uh, 1,200 went over Bonneville. Again, not that it makes any difference for us below Bonneville or even for that matter up above. Shad numbers are holding very strong, 85,000. And then, of course, Sockeye at 32. Uh, that went over 32 grand. Uh, that is for a total of just shy of half a million. But you better not go out there and chase them. Better not. <laughs> That's as far as I'm going to go on that. Uh, Willamette River, water t is technically low, but you got some pretty tall tides. So if you were going to take a look at the average, you know, you're going to be in the mid fives, roughly around the six. So plenty of water out there. Clarity, we're not even going to put it up there anymore. Uh, it's just really not a uh, talking point. It's, it's clear. Just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, we'll let the Columbia, same thing. Steel options are certainly still available to you out there. Uh, you're going to have to play those tides just like anything else because it will turn the river around, especially on these tall tide sets, right? These smaller ones, not necessarily so much, but on that incoming tide uh, all throughout the entire system. The lower you go in the system, the more this will affect you. Um, but again, play those tides if you're going to be sitting on the anchor uh, and trying to be successful. Send Jason. An email over there at Procure, Jason at Procure.com. Uh, you'll be entered in to have a chance to win that prize pack. And we don't want to forget, there's a number of tournaments and, and derbies that are coming up for the buoy ten fishery. And there's easily uh, several uh, that you can really just have in, in, in your mind because they're very popular. They've been around for a long time. One in particular is the buoy ten challenge. Uh, today is the last day. Is that right, Ryan? Today's the last day? for early bird registration. Uh, that's why I need you to have a microphone. <laughs> uh, so you can absolutely get registered today. Save yourself a little bit of dough. Tons of fun, and this blows up. By the time this is all you know, said and done before the tournament, it will be sold out. It is every year. Uh, so make sure that you just jump in now if you want to participate uh, in that buoy 10 challenge, uh, which is a ton of fun. It's just another way that you can add a little bit of a challenge. Wow. That was too easy. Uh, in that buoy tin area when you get down there uh, here in a month. I mean, literally, August 1. It's crazy how time flies, but August 1 gets you September, which gets us elk hunting. 
I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and check in with uh, Katie Sunig and find out what this weather is going to do long before September. But it seems like we're going to get into August sometime uh, early with this weather forecast. Yeah, well above that. So our seasonal high temperature is 84. That's the warmest we get throughout the year. And we're looking to just blow the roof off of that once we get to next week. Let's look at those conditions together. Start with the clouds and the chance for showers this morning. Should be cleared up by the time we get through midday. Then we have a repeat tomorrow morning of a few clouds and then a chance for a few showers. You see those little greens in there. That clears up then we have a few clouds Thursday morning that clears and a few clouds Wednesday morning that clears so that cloud afternoon evening clear sky pattern continues through Wednesday and then on Wednesday is when the high pressure starts kicking in. As far as the chance for showers, we're finishing up that chance that we have this morning for about another hundredth of an inch. And then you get to tomorrow morning, you see about three hundredths of an inch, which means the three day total would be just four hundredths. What we get today is the last day of June, means we're not going to make average for the month. This is the trough that's bringing us the slightly cooler temperatures and the chance for showers. But this is what we're watching and tracking. See that nice big H that's right there that's kind of moving toward us. Once we get to Wednesday, it starts to move a little closer and then into Thursday. And then by Saturday, it looks like it's sitting right over us. It stays here for Sunday and then starts breaking down as we go into Monday. I say this over and over and you'll hear me say it all the time. This is far enough out that we expect that to change. So keeping an eye on it, we're tracking it. We'll let you know, is it going to be warmer? Is it going to be cooler? But as it stands, Saturday could meet or break a record for that particular day. First thing I got to say is we all appreciate in the outdoor world uh, a weather forecast that's, you know, this could change. We appreciate you saying that. What's the potential that it's going to change to go the wrong way, you know, the triple digit thing? There are some models that show this is the cooler temperature. So uh, we uh, shall see. Uh, she's being optimistic. I, What's too hot for you? You asked me that yesterday. What, what temperature is too hot for you? Okay, so for me, it depends on the humidity. If it's humid, I can't get into the 80s. But if it's like the dry heat, like you get in Central Oregon or any of the deserts, I can get to 90 and I'm okay. Uh, makes sense. The humidity, we all hate that. That's why we live here in the Northwest. <laughs> Katie, thank you. We appreciate it. All right, we're going to cut to a break. When we come back, I have Mike, let me say sure I say this correctly, Gervasi. Here in the studio, we're going to introduce you to a product that I know that some of you may have seen, but a lot of you haven't. If you got kids, grandkids, whatever it might be, we're going to give you another option to keep them occupied, keep them safe, and having fun. Maybe even catching crab, maybe some fish. And if they get bored, they can go fly a kite. Like, literally. Huh. We'll be right back. <coughs> Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P-Line, because we fish. By Hawk and Fishing, perfection in fishing gear. And by Haxton's Canvas and Upholstery, the trusted name of the Pacific Northwest.